Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, Parlor, and Instagram. And of course, be sure to visit www.mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. My mother died when I was seven years old in a car accident. I saw it two months before it happened. Jimmy in the flesh. So how's life? It's day to day, you know. I'm James. Angela. I got a proposition for you. I need you to do that thing you do in that head of yours. I need you to find safe passage for these. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Pekovich, and this is episode number 276, out on July 10 on Apple TV, Prime Video, and other digital platforms, is Volition, an innovative and engrossing thinking man sci-fi thriller that follows a man afflicted with clairvoyance who tries to change the future after he has a vision of his own murder. Joining me on the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast is the director and co-writer of Volition, Tony Dean-Smith. Tony, I thank you very much for joining me today. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Pleasure is mine. So there are many elements to this movie, to to Volition. Um, It's a crime movie. It's a love story. It's a sci-fi thriller. I'm just curious, though, what was the initial idea, the initial conception that you and your brother, Ryan, had uh, when you came up with this story so many years ago? And how did that kind of evolve into the movie that we see today? Yeah, so it's been a process, certainly, and it almost takes the shape of uh, the protagonist's own journey as far as only receiving bits of information, you know, every now and then. So the first piece that I uh, sort of received um, or thought about was when I was in film school a little while ago, and I was always late as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So they always say, write what you know. And so I wrote this short script about a, a scientist who develops a drug that makes him early for everything. But um, it made him perceptually early. So he became sort of a, uh, a prisoner to his own foresight. So that's when I first came up with the, the sort of the locked-in perceptual loop that, you know, that guy back then wasn't a clairvoyant, but he might as well have been. But he couldn't see other people's lives. He could only see what was, you know, on his trajectory. So that sort of cemented in my brain. But I could never really get it to a very like, depthy level that the, the themes weren't that strong. The characters weren't grounded. So I put it away for a little while. And, um, and then a little bit later on, I was actually feeling a little bit stuck in my life, in my film career. And I realized that my actual fears, my perception of the future, was almost creating a self-fulfilling prophecy. I realized, oh, that actually relates to that old script that I had. So I started to work on it, and I wrote a pretty quick first draft. And then Ryan, my brother, uh, who's the co-writer and the producer of the film, uh, he had always been pitching me on this this concept related to the movie about turning clairvoyance structurally in on itself. Mm. Um, and so we just, you know, developed, I can't even tell you how many drafts of the script to try and get it right. And um, so we arrived at, you know, what became Volition, which is, I think, a, a much deeper look at what it is, you know, to, to at least the forces that play together against bait and free will. And can we have uh, can we make a difference between those two factors? The um, character of James, it's really interesting. He's not kind of like your typical kind of action sci-fi kind of hero. He's, he's just this ordinary guy, has this extraordinary ability, often falls on like these hard times. Um, was the character always written as this kind mm-hmm. of scruffy, hard-drinking guy that we see in the movie, or was there kind of like an evolution to how he was he was kind of uh, written in the, in the movie? Yeah. I think I might have just like dropped you a little bit there, but I think I got your question. Yes, James was always written that way. Um, and really, we, we decided on that from, a, again, a character-based perspective. We knew that somebody that, you know, if, if you have a gift of clairvoyance, you know, very often there's a lot of um, fun to be had at the beginning of mm. such a gift, but we weren't telling that story. We were telling the story of what happens a little bit later on when actually the gift is much more of an affliction, it's much more of a sadness. Because if you know it's in your future and you know that you can't change it, um, you know, when does apathy set in? Um, and then when does sort of self-serving choices set in? So we find James at that point of his life where 
he knows there's no point in trying. So he's got this really kind of ordinary, everyday man, cavalier, cocky attitude that it's really just covering his fear and, and his wounds underneath. And so, yeah, we always sort of want to tell the story from that perspective out. So a grounded science fiction tale. Yeah. The film kind of deals with different concepts involving destiny and fate, etc. Um, when dealing with these concepts and how the character kind of arrives at different periods in his life, did you and Ryan kind of establish kind of ground rules or philosophies of what the character can and cannot do with the film's different sci-fi elements? Yeah, we did. It was very important for us to establish rules. You know, film works... Um, like a magic trick in a way, as long as you establish the setup properly, you can almost get away with anything within that context. So we, at the beginning, we were first, you know, we first recognized that James is living in a fixed universe. Hmm. You know, um, it wasn't about multiple timelines, it wasn't about changing things. We knew that this was a fixed loop that he was experiencing. And he says in the film that he sees his life almost like a, that he's experiencing some kind of li- lousy rerun. So we wanted everything to be really, really fixed. Um, and yet, we also wanted to have, like, the allowance of a breakthrough, you know, for all of us that are temporarily stuck in our own lives. Um, it is a fixed loop until you break through, in a way. And so, we were playing with, um, yeah, just choice points and how choice points can actually really affect the trajectory of, of the future. Um, and so, the rules were very, very fixed and very tight. And we also decided that, um, you know, his clairvoyance, for example... He only sees things, again, that he's going to experience through his own eyes. But I think a lot of us have experienced that moment maybe in trauma where you have, even like a car accident, it's almost like you're seeing the accident from above for a second. Mm -hmm. So we thought there was something interesting about a a holographic perspective to an event, Um, almost as if like the the universe itself, the fabric of the photons almost had eyes watching the event. So, you know, visually we started to play with a bit of an allowance to go outside of James's direct perspective that's still related to his direct event. What I really, something I really love about your movie is the editing. It's got a really great structure, a really great, great pacing, which I really think makes the film and really makes its various sci-fi elements shine. Um, how much of that structure is established in the script and how much of it is kind of refined during editing? Because you edited the film as well, didn't you? I, I did edit the film. I had some help. I had a couple of assembly editors, and very important for people to come in and, you know, of course, offer off perspectives and you know, alternate awesome viewpoints. So, but actually, no, everything was really, really tight in the script. Ryan and I spent, you know, really a couple of years just trying to um, reverse engineer and, and build in that kind of clockwork nature of, of what we wanted to tell. So, so yeah, we shot a very, very tight script, but a very difficult script because it's, it's quite layered, of course. And then by the time we got to, to post, to the edit, and they always say, you know, the edit is always the final rewrite. And it just couldn't have been more true for Volition because we started to see that, you know, maybe you don't need so much information here or there, or maybe we do need more over here. So there were some rewrites and even some, some pickup shoots and reshoots. But all in all, the script, um, the script is really the... I think the guide and, and we adhere to it very closely. I really like the idea that James's ability is a curse on him. Um, and I just wanted to ask you a question. If you could have any extraordinary ability on the caveat that it will make your life miserable, what type of thing would you be willing to live with? For example, I always have a dream that I can fly. Mm-hmm. The problem is, I don't know how to land. <laughs> um, do, would you have? Do you have something similar yeah, like right. that? Oh, it's so funny! It's like I'm afraid. I would love to fly too, and yet I'm afraid of heights. So that's like a you know probably doesn't work so well. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's funny. I've actually often thought about the clairvoyant angle too. Um, I don't know if I would want to know. You know, uh, that is what I would say as well. Um, you know, the superhero gift. There's always a downside to them, I suppose, that uh, I never really look at. So um, I think I would probably be more like James. I think I would see a future and be like, okay, it's coming. I'm not going to do anything about it. So, you know, keep me away, I think, from those superhero powers. 
So for everyone out there, Volition releases July 10 on Apple TV, Prime Video and other digital platforms as well. I can highly, highly recommend this film. And Tony, I congratulations to you and also give congratulations to your brother Ryan as well on a, a really great movie here. I really enjoyed it very much. Thanks so much, Matt. Uh, it's been really gratifying and validating to talk to you know, audiences around the world, and we really appreciate your support. So thanks for having me.